Welcome back to another reading and correcting. With me, Kendar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch and YouTube. And if you are looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today, we are doing Chapter 20 of Trustless Shadows. Of the 70 or so scientists Adam had imprisoned here, we only have eight still alive that we bring back for the medic to look after. Valerie is now helping her, cleaning wounds and bandaging what doesn't require more work. She sees me and looks away, shame in her eyes. I can feel my anger rising, but it isn't directed at her or them. It's directed at Adam, at Amanda, at the people like them who use people who imprison them, kill them needlessly, experiment on them forcing them to work for someone else's plan. No one should have to be submitted to that. Not humans, nor demons. I'm going to end this, I tell her. She doesn't look up from tending to the cuts the men received. Why? You don't owe us anything. Not after what we've put you through. Will you do it again? Will you do this again when it's all over? I doubt they're going to let us do it. If they do... If Amanda immediately starts cleaning up this place and goes right back to making more people like me, will you be here to help her? She doesn't answer immediately, and I look around. The captain is talking with his soldiers. He'd want to head for Aman for Adam the moment they dropped off the scientists, but he'd been drawn into an argument with them. He's keeping He keeps tapping his wrist. I'm done with this, Barry says. Of the former... Like you, we made, you're the only one who's halfway decent, and considering what we put you through, I think that's in spite of us, not because of it. I can't tell if she's lying or not. The visual clues to truth and lies are subtle, are subtleties that, like many human things, escape me. I choose to believe her. You said you've been here since the start. What can you tell me about Adam? She snorts. I can tell you that isn't his name, for one thing. Amanda called him Maurice, but he seemed that it seems to anger him. Maurice Hinger, he was in the army. He volunteered for the procedure. Did the man I was before him this also volunteer? I don't know. I doubt it. You arrived sed sedated, and when you woke up, you panicked. Doctor Walker said something about you having been picked up because you were the perfect candidate. That wasn't me. He had a family, people he loved. He was taken from them. I didn't know that. I didn't know about that. I'm sorry. I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. I guess not, but he isn't around anymore. I don't suggest she finds his family. I can't see how that would help anyone. What Maurice went through wasn't anything like you did. The process was crude back then, painful. He screamed and fought against the restraint. Then he went still. I tried to recall if Valerie was in the recording of my creation. But the scientists in the chamber were, were busy and moving about, and Jason had focused on the, main, on the man in the chair, who would become me after that. We thought he died. We couldn't find a heartbeat. Then we were ha wheeling him away on a stretcher to dissect when he sat up. He almost killed Ferguson. He had his hand around his throat, and his skin was doing strange things. When he let Ferguson go, there were cuts on his neck. Maurice was confused, and instead of asking about what had happened to him, he wanted to know why he was naked. She moves to the unconscious woman, or maybe she's sleeping. Valerie cuts her shirt off, and on seeing the woman, the woman doesn't have a bra on, she drapes what's left of the sh shirt over her chest. And I repeated a lot of stuff there. She glances at me, and I get the feeling she's gauging my reaction. I know that I'm expected to have a reaction to seeing exposed breasts. It was one of the things Jason had the most trouble understanding about me. When I pointed out he didn't react to breasts either, he showed me a picture of naked men. He explained that he reacted to that. I didn't react to them either. Maurice seemed normal for a while. A few months, maybe. Well, mentally normal. Physically, his body had changed within hours of him waking up. It was the same with Francine and Isabel. Within hours of the procedure, it was evident they weren't entirely human anymore. She looks at me. 
it's why I was surprised when it took you close to two years to show any outward signs. She went back to cleaning the woman's gashes. The first sign we had something was wrong with Maurice was when he decided we had to call him Adam. He explained it was because he was the first of his kind. Why? She glanced at him. Why does the name Adam have to be used? It's from the Bible. He was the first man created. Eve was the first woman. Anyway, after that, we thought he, we should put him through a battery of tests, but Dr. Walker said no. She didn't act like him. She didn't act with him like she did with you. She was proud of him. Thought he was the crowning success of everything she worked for for the, for the she worked on for the previous 15 years. He was going to usher mankind's supremacy on this planet. He was going to get rid of the demons once and for all. Did anyone of you think at any point during that <clears throat> that they belong here as much as as much if not more so than humans do? She shakes her head. Dr. Walker was terrified that one day the demons would band together and kill us. She picked people who thought like her to work on the project. Turns out she was right to look around. That isn't their doing. It's Adam and she created him. So she's responsible for what is happening here. My people do not band together to kill, Claus says, making her jump and scream. The soldiers look in our direction, reaching for their weapons, and immediately relax when they don't see further violence. Mates will hunt together, he continues, watching with amusement as she tries to calm down. They will hunt with their child until the madness is too strong for them to be able to exert control. Too large of a band, and it is impossible to control the hunt. To direct the prey, keep the hunt going until you are, we are nourished. Valerie goes to the side away from Claus, then kneels next to the woman to continue washing her. What did Maurice do after that? I ask. Nothing out of the ordinary. The change in name was it for months. He was a master at killing demons, even before the process, and he'd been great at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Add strength and speed to that, as well as the way the black band on his skin can become hard, and it made him really tough. She focuses on the woman, <clears throat> applying bandages. We shot him as part of testing his resistance, and the higher caliber he was able to take, the more invincible he thought he was. He even wanted to be shot with irradi irradiated web bullets. Dr. Walker nixed the idea, but she managed to convince one of the so he managed to convince one of the soldiers anyway she frowns actually looking back on it that's about when he really began to change the bullet went through him of course the radiation weakens demons short circuit their healing and how they can control the body so it wasn't a surprise he took weeks to heal from that and he was in pain the whole time none of the painkillers we had worked on his physiology after the way he had after that, he always had this wariness in his eyes, like he didn't think he could trust us anymore. You think the radiation is what caused his personality to change? It didn't sound plausible. I'd, I'd been stabbed with an iterated sword and I hadn't changed. She shakes her head. I think that the incident made him, made it sink in. He was actually, that he was actually different from us. With the radiation affecting him, I think he began to see himself as more demon than human. We knew he had both a set of memories. He'd used this knowledge to kill many of the demons around the periphery of the city, and he never, it never had any problems killing them, even if he remembered them. She stood and stretched. After the incident, his skill ratio dropped like a rock. Dr. Walker thought it might have had something to do with further changes happening, but he was more erratic all around. He was irritable, easy to anger. It culminated with him killing his support team instead of the demon he'd been assigned. That's when Dr. Walker was ordered to terminate him. The captain doesn't look happy as he joins us. Valerie frowns. No, that came a few months later. He claimed not to remember what happened. We did run tests and for a while he was back to his old self. 
Do you think he lied? I ask, cutting off whatever the captain was about to say. Not then. We didn't have any reason to doubt him. We knew there would be glitches since this was a new process. Plenty of theories would advance to explain what had happened. The most credible one we had was that the demon memories had gained dominance for a while. After that, he started spending more and more time alone in his room. I even caught snarling, him snarling behind someone's back. She paused. Pauses. She pauses and picks up. Wait, wait a minute. Did I just switch tense? She frowns. Yep, I switched tense. Okay, where did I do that? Um, she stood and stretch. She stands and stretches. And my guess is it happened here because she's talking in the past and I just kept going. Ah, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Captain doesn't look as happy about her frowns. No, that came through better. All right. Uh, I asked, cutting up whatever Captain's about to say. No, then, okay, we did it. She pauses and picks up. Just as the captain is about to speak. Then there were the accidents. What accidents? The man asks in surprise. In here, she indicates the building. Stuff would blow up, hurting the person using it. Guns would jam, explode, or fail to work in the field. We redoubled the checks and maintenance, but it didn't change anything. Thompson got the brunt of the blame for the weapons, since they were his responsibility. He insisted Maurice was sabotaging them, but Dr. Walker wouldn't listen to him. As far as she was con concerned, he was perfect. She pulls. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I need to figure things out here. Okay, so yeah, this, this is... Pulls a chair. She pulls a chair and sits down. Captain still looks impatient. But he let her continue. Thompson installed cameras all over the armory without telling her. Thompson wasn't one to take the blame for someone else's mistake and not for sabotage. He got evidence of Morris tempering the guns. He and her had one hell of a fight over that. The order to terminate Maurice came not long after that. Captain shakes his head. Uh, that was the second order to kill him. Command got a copy of the armory video, but as far as they knew, Maurice was already dead at that point. So Dr. Walker had to explain explaining to do. She claims she never received the order and the tech never found proof the message reached her and was deleted. His termination wasn't left up to her at that point. A specialist team was sent. They failed? I ask. Not as far as we knew. At Dr. Walker's recommendation, Maurice was told there was a demon he had to kill, and he was sent there as if everything was normal. Usual support team, same, ar same arm armament. The ambush worked, but it was a bloody confrontation. By the time it was done, only two of the assault units were left alive. Morris's body was confirmed dead. Amanda took it to run tests before destroying it. Command got the test result, a video evidence of the body had and video evidence that the body the body had been destroyed. No, Valerie says. Morris's body never came back here. I would have known. Dr. Walker said the army took him. She sighs. I guess I should have known something was off when she wasn't as broken up about it as she, as I expected, but she set everyone working on the next version. I thought she was just burying her grief in the work. With work. Did she have any contact with him after that? Valerie stared at the men. How would I know? I told you. She said the army had his body. I didn't have any reason to suspect otherwise. I wouldn't know where she put him. Wherever it that was, he escaped, I say. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I say, Adam mentioned escaping from a box. Then he set out to build this. Then he set out to build his army. Stories reached my people from those who wander, youth coming together in ever larger group, larger than families. We didn't know what to make of them. It was Adam convincing them, forcing them to come with him, to turn on their elders. He did it to come. He did it to one of the city's older demons when he wouldn't accept Adam's order. Adam had his army kill him. Not a hunt. He told them to rip him apart and they fell on him. We do not kill without reason. We hunt for nourishment. We kill to protect what is ours. It was senseless. None of them should have agreed to do it, but because Adam told them to, they did. Why didn't he get them to kill you too? The captain asked. Because there are things that even Adam cannot force my people to do. He straightened. My age defies your understanding. None of my kind would dare lay a claw against me if I don't give them a reason to. One of them did, I say, before I realized I opened my mouth. I remember the group of demons that had ambushed me in Claws, and the fight between Claws and their leader. Claws deflates a little. When he looks at me, I get a sense he's bashful. Yes, my children can be stubborn. And that concludes chapter 20 of Trustless Shadows. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read this book, as well as the other two in the trilogy, they are available on Kindle Unlimited. If you want a different way to support me, that is on my Patreon where you can get access to just about everything I've written. And if you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Links are in the notes, and with that, I shall wish you a good day.